Mr. McCoy back with African Folktale Theater number five, How Lankanyana Outwitted the Monster. Lankanyana had left his mother and run away from home because the warriors were hunting for him. He walked along on his journey over the earth, but he had nothing to make music with and nothing happy to sing about. He was very tired and very hungry. On a small hill where he could see for a long distance in all directions, Lankanyana came upon a hare that had its lair in the tall grass. Hare is clever and a quick runner. Lankanyana could not creep up on him unseen and could never hope to catch him. So he greeted him and sat down on a stone to talk. Why is it that you have such long ears? He asked. So I can hear things even before they happen. Can you hear a flute playing? Hare listened and said he could hear no such thing. When I came from the river, I saw the buffalo sleeping in the shade. Now they come this way. If we do not run, they will trample us. I can hear them coming, Lankanyana said. Hare listened. I cannot hear them, he said. But they are galloping this way. Clean your ears and listen again. Hare cleaned his ears with a grass stalk, and again he listened, but he could not hear the buffalo. There is no time to lose, Lankanyana said. Put your ears to the ground, and surely you will hear the rumble of their hooves. Hare bent his head to the ground and flattened out his long ears, and as he did so, Lankanyana jumped on his ears and pinned him down. Hare was caught. He struggled, but he could not escape. He was tasty game, and Lankanyana made short work of him, lighting a fire to roast his meat. Afterward, he kept one of Hare's hollow leg bones and shaped it into a flute. He went along playing on his flute this song. I met the hare. No one is more cute. Now he does not care. His shin bone is a flute. Lankanyana came to a part of the river where there was a deep pool. Near the pool was a tree, and a laguan was resting in its branches. Where do you come from? asked Laguan. Lankanyana played on his flute and sang. I tricked the cannibal's mother. We played at cooking each other. I did not burn. She was done to a turn. Laguan asked Lankanyana to give him the flute, but Lankanyana refused. Then I will come down and take it from you, Laguan said. He was insolent because he was close to the deep pool. He could easily dive into it and no one could follow him there. Come down and take the flute if you can, Lankanyana said. So Laguan climbed out of the tree. He has a long, heavy tail, and its thin end is like the thong of a cattle whip. Lankanyana did not know to what use Laguan could put it. Give me the flute, and we need not fight about it, Laguan said. Do you think you can beat me with words because you have a double tongue, Lankanyana said? Suddenly, Laguan struck with his long tail. The blow knocked Lankanyana out of his feet. Off his feet he fell, and the flute rolled away. Laguan picked it up, and he dived into the pool and disappeared from sight in the deep pool. In this way, it happened that Lankanyana was caught unawares and lost his flute. He went on, but his heart was sore now that he had no music. He could not get the flute back. When he stopped to listen, he heard Laguan somewhere near the deep pool playing on it. He was playing a song to call the cows closer to the river so he could tie their hind legs with his tail and milk them. Lankanyana did not stop walking for a long time. The sun was already setting and still he had met no one along the path to guide him. At last he saw a very strange apparition sitting under a tree. It was a monster for it had only one leg and one arm. There was only one side to its body and it had half a face, one eye, and long teeth on that side of its mouth. Grass grew out of its other side. Lankanyana was afraid. He wanted to run away, but he saw that the monster was eating a big loaf of steamed bread which it held in its one hand. The tantalizing smell of the bread made Lankanyana's mouth water. The monster was tearing chunks off the loaf with its teeth. What do you want, 
go away or I will tear you up and eat you too, the monster hissed. The wind of its breath when it spoke sounded like whistling in the grass. I am going. Why should you eat me? I have done you no wrong, Lankanyana answered. He walked on along the path. He came to some bushes and hid behind them to watch the monster. The monster stopped eating and soon it lay down on its side like one who wants to sleep. Lankanyana waited a while, then he crept back. Shh, shh, shh. The monster was fast asleep. Its snores blew in and out of the grass at the side of its head. Lankanyana could see the bulging bag beside the monster. There must be another loaf of steamed bread in the bag, he thought. He crept closer, his knees knocking together. Without making a sound, Lankanyana opened the bag, put his hand in, and took out a loaf of bread even larger than the one the monster had eaten. Just then, the butcher bird in the tree began to cry out, Who do I kill? Who do I kill? Who do I kill? The thieves are stealing your red ox. The monster woke up and saw Lankanyana running away with the loaf of bread. At once, it jumped to its one foot and began to chase him. Stop, I will singe your hair. I will roast you on a spit, it shouted. It came after Lankanyana hopping on one long leg. Even with one leg, it moved quickly. The wind whistled through the grass growing from its other side as it ran. Lankanyana ran so fast that he nearly fell over his own feet. His heels were kicking against his own bottom. The monster gained on Lankanyana. It reached out a hand to snatch him. Nyada, 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 the foot stomped as it hopped. Under some trees, Lankanyana saw the opening of a snake's hole. He dived down the hole with the loaf of bread and crawled in till he could go no further. There he was stuck. The monster had a long leg and its arm was just as long. It thrust its hand down the hole, deeper and deeper, groping around until at last it caught Lankanyana by the ankle. Ha, ha, ha! Pull away, you ugly thing! You have caught hold of the root of a tree! Lankanyana shouted. The monster heard him. It did not mean to waste its strength pulling at the root of a tree. So it let go of Lankanyana's leg and felt around with its hand down in the snake's hole. It caught hold of a strong tree root. Wah! Me! My ye! Lankanyana screamed. Let me go! You are killing me, you cannibal! The monster held on. It pulled and pulled and wrenched its way on that and on the root. The sweat fell in drops off the point of its half chin. Oh, my father, I'm being torn apart, Lankanyana cried. Have mercy on me. I will give you back your bread. The monster went on pulling at the root for a long time until it grew tired and its fingers could no longer grip the root. It gave up the struggle and went away. Then Lankanyana came out of the snake's hole. He sat on a stone and ate until his stomach was full. When he had finished, he took up his stick and went on his way. So what would you say is the theme of this African folktale? Share with your fellow listener. And yes, this marks the end of this African folktale when next we gather, it will be African folktale number six entitled, Words as Sweet as Honey, from Sankambi. Yes, I know you'll be there in the audience. It will be truly fantastic.